Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance. And this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Daisy. And here's her story. Dear Ollie, you can call me Daisy. And all the names in my story have been changed, so read them as I have written. In honor of Father's Day, well, this is late, I am writing to you about the fathers in my life. Yes, the quotes are intentional and they were not the fatherly type to begin with. I am recently divorced from a mostly, most likely narc BPD man with whom I have wasted a little over 20 years on. But as many of your other viewers have said, <clears throat> that is a tale for another day. From what my mother has told me, my biological father never wanted children. He was physically abusive. He was a physically abusive alcoholic with definite narc behaviors, which I realized as I got older. She told me that even though he said he did not want kids, she got pregnant twice with the idea that having kids would change his behavior. She told me that she divorced him when he started to get physically abusive, when he started to physically abuse her. I was four at the time and I really don't have many memories of them living together. I have one sister that is two years older than me and she is also very BPD-ish. I went, I went the people... I went the people pleaser route. I I which to which I constantly worry that I might upset someone and take on other people's happiness as my job obligation. <clears throat> my mom did meet someone a few years after divorcing my father, a man who also had alcohol issues, just not as bad, and after one breakup, he gave my al he gave up alcohol for many years. Let's call him Dan. Dan tried to befriend my sister and I and seemed nice. He came to my concerts and marching band performances. I helped him during his open houses when he sold real estate. It all seemed okay for the most part. I don't remember having any depth, co any depth conversations with my mom or Dan, mostly because I felt like I'd bother them with my problems or I was embarrassed. My... During my teen, during my tweens and teens, I dealt with, phys with physical abuse from my sister, a sexual assault, and some very inappropriate comments made by my biological father. I never mentioned these to my parents, and they were hard to deal with as a child young woman. I realize now that I was probably made to feel like I shouldn't bother adults with my problems. But for the most part, Dan was nice to me. He and my mom bickered a lot, even before my mom became disabled. When you would ask Dan to help with something, you would get a very nasty, aw, oh, come on. Loud sighs, loud slam of the recliner, closing and trudging. What do you want? Then he was done. Let's say it was getting something down from the shelf for changing a light bulb for my mom. It was, it was, it was all... There, I did, insert deed here for my baby. Is my baby happy now? All sweet and almost condescending. Another thing he did that irked me was that he cooked, when he cooked a meal, he would ooh and ah over it while he ate, like he was having an orgasm or something. Ick, no thank you. Because if he didn't, I got it. I got who your mom is. Your mom's a constant, your mom is a forever child. And she needs to be, oh, look how good, oh, how wonderful, every fucking moment of her goddamn life. It never ends. And you have no time to be a child. You're not allowed any compliments because they're all meant for fucking her. And he resents it. But she just wants him to say it. This, most of this is sarcasm. The food probably wasn't so much sarcasm because he wants to eat. But the physically getting things for her, that's all sarcasm. But she don't care as long as he's doing it. As long as he's doing for her. Which is probably why she got rid of your, your, fa your biological father. Because he wouldn't do for her. He wouldn't give up alcohol for her. I don't know, is your father still an alcoholic, by the way? <clears throat> no, thank you. When Harry met Sally, I don't want what he's having. He also once complained to me when I was 18 that my mom never wanted to have sex with him. And my mom complained that he always wanted it. 
This is what Charlene used to go through with her parents. I remember telling them to never talk to me about the sex lives again because it's all about them. <clears throat> His loud outbursts. <clears throat> His loud outbursts over being asked to help with something were enough to never want to ask him to do anything for me. Right, right. But he would continue doing for your mother. As long as she was doing for her. My ex did the exact same thing. Only my ex would take it further and find something to be outraged over then launch into a tirade about how I never put anything away. I'm a slob, etc., etc. All because he didn't see a screwdriver when first opening the drawer scotch tape. I do believe the outbursts like this are intended to make people think twice about bothering them. I have always felt that this is tied to their entitlement and being lazy. It is. It is, and they want what they want when they want it. And if they don't, you're gonna you're to be blamed. You're to be blamed. So you didn't marry your father, you married your stepfather. Two and a half years ago, my mom died. I flew out for nearly three weeks. I was there before she died for a week with the kids. Dan had not been forthcoming about how seriously sick mom had gotten and turned me down turned me down visiting to help out in the months prior when I came back from seeing my mom in the hospital and was in shock at her condition I started to sob to which she said see what I've been dealing with all alone all this time in fact any conversation I had with him following my mom's death left me feeling guilty and miserable because he I'm telling you he resented her he wanted her to die alone Because he resented her. She couldn't pick up a phone? Why was all the, com uh, all the contact contingent on him? She didn't call you to tell you how sick she was? She didn't have a phone in her, in her hospital room? Don't believe it's all on him either. My step siblings, three from his first marriage, went out to a few meals went out to a few meals with him following my mom's death. And then they were back to their lives. I was I was there to clear out my mom's belongings, help with arrangements, get my dad checked out by a doctor because he was having health issues himself, and we spent hours talking mostly about how he did all he could have and there wasn't anything else he could have done prior to my mom dying that would have changed things. My mom hit her symptoms coughing up blood prior to her death. She was a smoker, became a shut-in, refused to go to doctors or follow their orders. She started chain smoking up to three packs a day until she started having atrial fibrillation, which caused the blood clots that eventually killed her. My mom's health and how I feel like she used to punish and control Dan will have to be another story, which is why he let her die like that. She, he hated her. He resented the shit out of her. He despised that she smoked. He wouldn't take her to buy cigarettes, so she mail-ordered them. He was an ex-smoker himself, and she blamed all her health issues on smoking. So I feel like it was a control, control struggle between them. Exactly. A control struggle she lost on her deathbed. Interestingly enough, guess what Dan went back to after my mom died. My mom had a huge fear of being buried alive. So much so that she always talked about wanting to be cremated instead of buried. When they would fight over her smoking, he used to threaten to bury her instead of cremating her after her death. I found, I found that incredibly cruel. Interestingly though, guess what Dan went back to after mom died? Yup, smoking. Because now he probably feels guilty what he did. He punished her. He fucking punished her on her deathbed. He punished her. He punished her for the years of misery, for the control. So like, you want to fucking die from smoking? Then you're going to fucking die from smoking. That's what he said. 
You want to make this all about you your whole life? We're going to make your death all about you and you alone. But then again, your mother, you said she was hiding her symptoms anyway. <clears throat> so the narcissist reaps what they sow, man. One day after taking care of stuff from my dad, we were at lunch. Our waitress recognized my dad, and I guess I had seen him at some other place. And guess, and I guess had seen him at some other place. She was talking to him about how he obviously, and he obviously did not remember. In the now awkward pause, I interjected. Sometimes it's hard to recognize someone when they aren't in their usual place. Like when I see a student of mine at the grocery store, I'm a teacher. He turned to me angrily and said, why do you do that? Why do you, would you stop doing that? You always interrupt me all the time. It's very rude. I apparently didn't realize that he was the only one allowed to converse with the waitress, even though she was talking to us both. You, you don't understand. Your father, believe it or not, is still reacting to your mother. And what he's seeing is how your mother was controlling, controlled her ex-husband, controlled you, and probably controlled him while they were married you got to real you got to understand the same things your mother did to your stepfather she did to your father so like when you're trying to jump in and help him he's seeing you as your mother trying to control him like the same way she did dan same she controls everything I believe this was an issue with me taking attention away from this pretty woman giving my dad attention. He was so much a looker, went out and went out and about that he walked into many objects and he even pulled a muscle in his neck once and nearly ran a red light turning around to look at a woman. I always felt this was disgusting. I realize people can look, but he's obviously but he was just so obviously doing it. He also used to call my mom the goods. That always made my skin crawl and I, and I was shocked and hurt and I barely talked the rest of the meal. I wanted to walk out. I should have. Yeah, well, you know, he was, that's what he was doing. He was obvious. But what you did in that moment was remind him of your mother and your mother's worst traits. That's what happened there. Not excusing what he did, but I'm telling you where it's coming from. I brought the kids out for a visit about five months after my mom died. We always visited when we were off from, from school in the summer. The day we arrived, the neighbor came over and let's call her Minnie. My dad had received a gift basket the day before, and the items from it were on the kitchen counter, including the wrapping, stuffing, etc. The normal stuff you'd expect when opening a gift basket. Also on the counter was a box of cereal and Pop-Tarts for my kids. It was a breakfast bar, so I often left snacks and some other things out for them to find easily. Minnie walked in and said, what happened to your clean counter? Dan was quick to launch into a tirade on me, almost as, as if the two of them had discussed the topic at some earlier point. So much so, I was, I was shocked. Well, this is a, ha well, this is a daisy house now. So this means there's crap on the counter and it won't be clean. Your father is replacing you, your mother, with you. Your, that's exactly he's reacting as he would react to your mother. Even your mother commented on how disgusting your house was when she visited, how filthy it was. I know what being in your house is like. Garbage everywhere. You leave food in the fridge for me to throw away after you leave. There was more about how disgusting of a person and my home was. I just don't remember the exact words. The kids are in the other room and I'm sure, and I'm sure heard it. I said nothing, walked out on his tirade, and went to my bedroom and shut the door. He left to go to the store. After that, I went on a clean, cleaning frenzy, did all the dishes, cleaned the counter, even cleaned up the remains of the gist basket he had received. I was literally making like we weren't, we weren't there at all. 
When loading the dishwasher, I was overcome and collapsed onto the floor, sobbing. Even typing this out has my heart racing and I'm in tears. My kids came over to me because they thought I hurt myself. I composed myself and said I was upset over what my dad had said and I was really missing my mom. It was the first time I had been back to their house after she died. They shared that they said he had acted weird and angry. About an hour later, Minnie calls me and asks me if I want to have a drink with her. I'm game. I'm even, I, I mean, I'm game. She even seemed a bit shocked by my dad's reaction or so I thought. While I'm over there, she starts to tell me that I have no idea how my dad has been, that he's been having coffee with her and her husband every day since my mom died and that he's so distraught. I reply that I understand he is grieving, so am I, but what does that have to do with the tirade he just threw at me? Then he says, well, you have to understand, Daisy, he lost the love of his life. I told you this is all about your mother. It's just replacing you with your mom. I'm telling you, that's what it is. Then I realize that she isn't giving one shit about how I might feel. She's just trying to offset me being mad. I reply to her, oh, this is a pissing contest, is it? Well, let's see. I knew her longer. I shared DNA and I lived with her inside nine, for nine months, all of which has nothing to do with my dad being a total ass to me earlier. Yes, he may be grieving, but he doesn't get to be an asshole to me. And I walked out. The sad thing is, he talks down to her all the time when she's not around. How much of a bimbo he is, how much of a bimbo she is, how stupid she is, etc. Right. Yeah, he's a narc. Which you haven't accepted, Daisy, is you were just surrounded by all narcissists and you're trying to find some kind of morality or empathy in this and there's just not your father sees anything you do as a reflection of your mother and in so doing he's trying to recreate the relationship he wanted with her and it's the same seems like very similar to the one dan had with her and you're just continuing to be shit on your whole life because you're still playing the same role you were playing as a child And your mother is still controlling everybody from beyond the grave. That's how damaging your mother's behavior was. Is she can still control all this shit, all her monkeys and, enab and enablers from beyond the grave. Though Dan made her suffer at the end. The effects of her toxicity are still lingering on all of you. He's a looker for all these women, but he's but your mother's been the love of his life after how many years of divorce? Father just might be a player himself, just throwing lines. Later that day, I caught my dad and said, based on how you were treating me earlier, I'm getting the feeling you don't want me here. If you don't want me here, say so and we'll leave. But the way you acted before was uncalled for. I don't exactly remember him saying he was sorry for the tirade because because he didn't because probably he didn't but he did say he wanted us there and there were no other tirades on the trip. Anytime I said anything about the abuse and unhappiness I had in my marriage it was always met with just leave him by my mom and if you lay on the floor don't be upset when people walk walk on you like a doormat. By Dan. Dan even once called and called to tell me to stop complaining about things to my mom because it caused her such anxiety that she would not be able to stop thinking about it and be up sick to her stomach all night. So I just started to say everything was fine. When my mom was dying in the hospital, I told Dan how worried I was about losing him as dad as a dad after my mom's death since since she was my connection to him. 
I remember the response he gave me. He hugged me tightly and said, that'll never happen. You're as much as a daughter to me as Mel, daughter from his first marriage. It sounded and felt sincere, and I believed him. <clears throat> 11 months after my mom died, my dad was, interesting, was interested in meeting someone. He's 80, and even though I was not ready for him to move on, I told him to join a social club and get out there if he wanted to. Why wouldn't you be at 80? Look, Daisy, I mean, it seems like you got a lot of little girl tendencies here yourself. He said my step-sibling said it was too soon and he had to be careful. At 80? From what? You don't want to get someone pregnant? Seems like the whole family's been infantilized. And what are you worried about at 80? He's going to knock someone up and we'll fuck up his future? I'm now coming to realize they probably never said that. Maybe he was abating his own feelings by bringing in other fictional people to bolster his story. You know, the whole, well, everybody thinks this about you or everybody's saying this and it just turns out to be BS. As I said, I wasn't ready for it, but that's my own issue to deal with, not his. <clears throat> he said he was flying to New York to visit a friend of a family, a woman, over New Year's Eve. I said, great, go have a good time. From that point on, communication with Dan was hit or miss. I asked for photos and for him to tell me about her. Let's call her Wendy. I got neither. I, f I did finally see a Facebook photo. It wasn't sent to me by Dan or any, or any family member. I just saw it on his feed. At the time, I told my ex, my now ex, that I wanted a divorce. It was obviously a hard time for me. And now a year after my mom's death made me miss her more. She, once she was once divorced. I would have liked to talk to her about what she went through. You would think that Dan would offer some words of encouragement, but now whenever I tried to talk about it, he would say, well, you took long enough. Your mother and I were always disappointed you stayed with him for so long. I don't know why you would let yourself be a doormat all those years, and your mom and I always thought you were wasting your college education and brain by not having a real job. I only teach part-time, but I just started back to school to become a learning specialist to work with special needs children since I have a passion for that. So it was, so just as it was when I was younger, my response became, it's going fine, right? Because you never grew up. You never grew up. And did you divorce your husband so you could try to maybe have another connection to your mother? Was, was, was everything you're doing in life so you were trying to connect to these people? Three months after that, Dan and Wendy are now living together. Again, I knew nearly nothing about her. I kept asking for photos and to talk to her, but I knew, but I knew what was going on. I was not important anymore. I didn't want to believe it, but I just had gone with my biological father. This wasn't, this wasn't much different. Dan told me that he'd be in New York for the summer until his birthday, which is pretty much the only time I can bring the kids out. After that, he said he was taking Wendy to Vegas for his birthday trip. Thanks to the neighbor, Minnie, I found out that he was in town for his birthday having a big party at my stepbrother's house to celebrate their engagement. This was two weeks before his birthday, and he said nothing to me about any of it yet. I honestly believe that I honestly believe she was jealous that my dad's attention was on her when she was soaking up when he was soaking up the grieving widower attention and now going to somebody else and I think she knew my dad wanted to tell me in person and she was ru ruining that for him I could have been there for the big announcement dinner he lied to me so I wouldn't make plans to be there during his birthday and took the lie that about it already that was a sign that I wasn't wanted around I said nothing to my dad about knowing ahead of time, but said yes when he mentioned bringing out the kids for the wedding and when he told me two weeks later. You want to know why they don't want you around? First of all, because you act a lot like your mother.
and you're controlling ways and it's way over the top and you're a bit of a line crosser yourself. The other problem is you just remind them of your mother and they probably don't want any memories of your mother around when he's trying to trying to marry a new and it's wrong that's what's going on none of my step siblings said anything to me either they rarely talk to me in general and I always felt on the outs of any hope of a relationship with them I gave up on that 10 years ago. My mom had commented several times as to feeling the same. Wendy talked to me for like 10 minutes on the phone, normal chit chat, nothing remarkable. I received a wedding invitation in the mail a week later, RSVP'd yes for the kids and I brought and I bought plane tickets. I was dealing with a huge amount of CPTSD from the abuse from my marriage and I was very depressed. I had already been under the care of a doctor and psychologist and they were helping, but it was a rough time. I had dealt with emotional, verbal, sexual abuse, sleep deprivation, and tons of general mind fuckery. Just as you once mentioned in a video, I wanted to stay inside, close the curtains, and be in a cave because I couldn't handle the trust issues I now had with people. I literally couldn't handle much of anything and I saved that I save that to be the best m mom I could to my kids. Dan and Wendy's wedding was scheduled for mid-October. October. Dan had told me that he wouldn't be able to stay in the spare bedroom at, that I wouldn't be able to stay in the spare bedroom at my parents' house because Wendy's daughter was going to be there, but Minnie said we could stay at her house. I was all I was already getting feels like I wasn't wanted. It's my parents' house. I, why wouldn't I be able to stay? It was very cold. But I played nice, said okay, said I'd get a hotel and a rental car and you wouldn't have to worry about me or the kids at all. And he's the one who told you to stop being a doormat, right? You just got to realize when you're not wanted. Then it started. Minnie, the flying monkey neighbor, started to chat about her dog. I used to be a vet tech and her dog has health issues. She would start about her dog and then start saying stuff like, oh, this wedding is becoming bigger than they wanted. It's going to be so hectic. You won't have much time with your dad and stuff like that. I said, be straight with me. Did, did anyone say or do anything to let it be known that I wasn't wanted there? She said no and backtracked, talking again about how chaotic it would be. She also said, well, it's going to be so busy and you'll be flying out with the kids and barely get to see your dad, so it won't be a good visit. I said, we're coming to see him get married, and after that, we're going to do our own things. I know what a wedding is like. I'm not expecting them to entertain us. Two weeks after that, Dan calls me. Now, I've been calling him dad for years and years before I had kids and really viewed him as my dad and my kids know him as grandpa. Dan and I share a passion for weather and there was a tropical storm coming about 250 miles from my house, like the outer edge of it that far away. We were not in the path. He calls me to ask if I'm all set, water, food, batteries. I said, yes, but it's not going to hit us. Thanks for your concern, yada, yada. He then starts to give me the same lines Minnie did about the hectic nature of the wedding. He won't have time for me. He won't, he won't get to see the kids and so on. My BS detector is going off, so I ask, so are you saying you would rather me visit at a time in the future where you could spend more time with me and the kids? Dan, yes, I won't be upset if you missed the wedding. Me, okay, then I will make plans to visit the kids when the kids have a break during school. But I'll still come for the wedding. It'll be easy. I'll get a nice hotel, a car, and then go to Vegas for a day or two. I'm looking forward to seeing you get married. Honestly, at this point, I know what's coming and don't want... Honestly, at this point, I know what's coming and I don't want to go. He doesn't want me there, but I'm not going to let him bullshit me on the reason. I want, him, I want to make him tell me why. And he says, that's great, and we're off the f And he says, and says, that's great, and we're off the phone. Four days later, he calls again about some storm preparedness. And then he says, yeah, about the wedding. Don't come. Okay, me. Okay, why? Dan. Wendy is sensitive about me being stuck in the past about your mom. I know it. I told you this was what it was about. 
about your mom and you being at the wedding will just be another reminder of that. Okay, I won't come. I then said, I told you that's what it was. I told you that's what it was. At 80. Then I said I had to, get, I had to go and got off the phone. I hated being right about it at this point. Ollie, do you sometimes hate being right about people being assholes in disguise? I didn't want to be there. It was, it was, it was heading. I didn't want to be where it was heading, but it was there. I was being discarded. I was sad a year and a half after my mom died. I was losing who I thought was my dad. And in that instance, it was like my mom had died. It was, I, it devastated me. And I realized when you were bringing up your dad, you're talking about Dan. I thought you were talking about your biological father. So I don't have much family. It was my mom, Dan, my sister. Most of the rest of the family I didn't talk to. I had lost, expectedly so, all the in-laws I thought over 20 years. I knew it would happen, but it still hurts. There were, there were a few of the in-laws I actually liked. Now, three weeks from my wedding, I'm so angry. Dan isn't returning my texts or calls, so I write him an email. Tell him it's bullshit and he's wrong for excluding me and his grandkids. I remind him how he told me I was as much of a daughter to him as I was as, as his first one while mom was in the hospital. I told him he was a liar and that I refuse to be treated as anything less than a daughter and he should tell me now if there's no place for me in his life going forward. I tell him that nobody should make you feel like you have to exclude people from your life and that I am also well aware that he is throwing me, th he may be throwing her under the bus instead. Yeah, but Daisy, he's been throwing you under the bus your whole life and you've been getting thrown, treated like this your entire life. This is nothing new. I don't need to be told that it's both of them doing this. If she insisted and he obliged, it's just a bad, if not worse, than if it was his idea in the first place. Still no response, but I know he's read it because Minnie calls me to discuss my anger at Dan. I didn't. T you should be telling Minnie to go fuck herself. I didn't tell her. I sent the letter because I knew what she was, what she was really about. She says, you can't judge your dad by what, he, by what you went through in your marriage. I said, I can and absolutely will. And who are you to tell me what I can or can't be upset about? He doesn't like you. He calls you a bimbo when you're not around. Maybe you should think about the people you are being a flying monkey for. After all, he used to tell me not to be a doormat. I just never realized he was giving me advice on how to eventually deal with him. But I told you, he's the one who's telling you not to be a doormat as you're being a fucking doormat. That was the last time I talked to her. This was the end of September. Shortly after that, Dan posted some quotes on his Facebook page. It's sad when family isn't talking. One day that will be regretted. That will be the funeral. That day will be the funeral. When I'm mad, I keep my mouth shut because if I opened it, all hell would break loose. Yeah, I know they're passively aggressive for me and no, I won't regret the day of your funeral because I won't be going. The wedding happened. Pictures were posted online, including the one that, that was captioned. All of our beautiful grandchildren. Well, not all, but yeah, now it's all because they can fuck all the way off. I deleted them all off my Facebook and not have spoken to them since. At Christmas, he sent kids. He sent the kids a gift card. They left messages to thank him. He never responded. Why? You should have just sent it back. Why accept it? Don't accept anything from him. My kids who are now 13, 15 and 13 know exactly what happened with their grandfather. I'm not going to sugarcoat it or pretend he's a good grandfather when he sends a gift. Grandpa met someone new and married her, and now he doesn't feel like we're important enough to include in his new life. This hurts me. I don't believe this is the right way to treat me or you two, so I'm choosing not to keep him in my life. They have his number and his email. He has theirs, but they don't seem interested in keeping in touch. I have 50-50 custody w with their dad, and I encourage them to have a great relationship with him. Even though their dad has been emotionally abusive to them in the past, it's not happening now, and I always support a healthy relationship between them.
I don't feel like I have to do the same with Dan and I don't want to keep up the bullshit guys that we should put up with bad behavior just because it's family. Just on a side note about Wendy, Wendy has another Facebook profile, one where she posted about her dead husband every year for five years saying how much she missed him. Because it's not her, it's him. It was always him. She made her current Facebook page shortly after meeting dad, which was 11 months after my mom died. Flying Monkey Minnie told me one time that her stepdad, her stepkids weren't coming to the wedding as a way to prove to me I shouldn't be angry. She also said Dan's health wasn't good. His memory wasn't good, to which I told her I didn't give a fuck if she, if and or if I, to which I told her I didn't give a fuck if and or but that what that what Dan was going was doing was wrong. And I have a right to feel angry about it. I also told her she can throw all the shits, all the shit against the wall about what she wanted. Nothing was going to stick. So yeah, the last three years of my life have been the most challenging. I went from having a family to realizing what family actually is, to discovering what my family, what my family is way better. Oh, family. F uh, f my family is way better. Friends who are my family. I also will not be going back to my maiden name now that I'm divorced, I don't want Dan's last name and my biological father is a jerk. So I'm going to take the last name of the one man father in my life who truly loved and treated me well, my grandfather. I was often told I'm a lot like him personality wise. <clears throat> I'm still dealing with major depression, but I'm getting through it. I adopted a dog. He's awesome and a big help when I'm feeling alone. The best part of all this is my kids have adjusted wonderfully to the divorce they are thriving and they know i was 100 percent correct finally getting out of that marriage best wishes to you and charlene and the calves hope you heal fast i enjoy your channel and it has helped me immensely daisy what you need to realize daisy is that these people were never you didn't lose your family they were never your family never and all this is just him and a reaction to your mother all of it he didn't call you when she was dying either a because he wanted to punish you and b because you're never going to be family you were never or were you ever going to be family to the narcissist period. So I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your contribution and story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to anybody watching. Please leave any comments or, or advice, uh, any uh, advice or opinions in the comment section below. And if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to donate, you'd like to make a contribution for a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you guys. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.